now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, I'm Alex, and this is The Ramble, and we come to you from New York, that city you see right below you, the city is so nice, they named it twice. Let's go out now to Nevada, and that is Chuck Farnham, formerly a regular on my radio program in San Francisco, and uh, there he is, ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? I'm, I'm all right, I'm... Uh... I'm uh, moving today. I'm in Modesto. You're in Modesto? Oh, I used to live in Modesto. Really? In fact, you remember the movie um, uh, uh, American Graffiti? Of course. And the quote was, where were you in 62? You know where I was in 62? I was in Modesto. Yeah. Wow. And that's where it takes place. So, yeah, yeah. I was, you go down Main Street, it looks the same as a movie. Well, yeah, but it wasn't filmed there. It was that, it was filmed. Uh, let's see here, American Graffiti. The first night of shooting was in San Rafael, California. So what you saw was the main street in San Rafael, which I'm very aware of because that's where I grew up, right, right. next to it in San Anselmo. And then they they kicked them out of uh, out of uh, San uh, out of um, uh, San Rafael because uh, they felt it was too much trouble. Okay, so he had to go up to Petaluma to finish the film. Well, that makes sense. So that Main Street is partially San Rafael and partially Modesto, but it is, and the um, Mel's Diner? Yeah, yeah. Was somewhere down in the, in near Modesto, but not in Modesto. Nothing was shot in oh. Modesto. Oh, wow. It's a weird little town. Well, I used to work. That's where, but one of my first radio stations I worked at. You know, I can tell you this. A couple of days ago, I was, I was in a weed store. Right. Mm hmm. I love going in weed stores. I'm fascinated by the uh, customer service and everything. And I'm sitting there and I'm talking to this person about their weed and what they've got and why they have what they have. And all of a sudden, I hear, "Hey, Chuck Farno." And, uh, and I'm like, what, what? And the, the woman I'm talking to goes, somebody seems to know you. And I went, in Modesto? And I turned around, hey, Alex Bell is live 105. And I went, what? And she goes, I recognized your voice when you were talking to that woman. And you were part of that Alex Bell show. We used to listen, me and my... My sister used to listen to you guys in the morning. I just, you know, apologize like usual. Wow. But wow. that's decades ago. And there it is. So let me ask you, what are you doing in Modesto? I'm on my way to a physics conference. A what, a what conference? Physics. Okay. I'm on my way to a physics conference. And I usually stop in here because I like to hang out with um, um, Blind Bob uh, from Modesto. And I can, I can actually show you Bob because he's in the room here if I can turn the camera around. Your hand is all I see now. Yeah, let's see. But how do you turn the camera around on this thing? That, you, oh, you, there it is. You move the entire earth. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Do I do it? Well, that, obviously Blind Bob isn't there, but there's a that dog. Blind Bob right there. Oh, that's the, the dog is Blind Bob? Yeah, and he's got his own C&I dog, Romo, that when I'm hanging out with Bob, Romo assumes that that's his uh, day off. Yeah. Now, who's, so, com who's coming in the door there, the owner? Oh, no, that's, that's the person who owns the house. Okay. All right. Let, what do I do? Let's go back. Can we see you now again? Maybe. Well, you should be able to see me now. 
No, no, you t- you got to turn the camera around or something. I don't. What? Uh, no, you're using an iPhone, right? Yeah. Okay, so what you do is you you go down to the bottom of the picture. There's a, like a rotating little thing with arrows. Right. There's Bob. Yeah. You hit that, and you and, you get. And then there's. Hold on, I got it. Yeah. And then there there's you me. go. See. Yeah. So just that easy. Yeah, I hang with Bob, and uh, he's blind, and uh, he um, it's, it's cute because you if you're if you're sleeping on the couch as I do here on occasion, mm-hmm. he um, will get too close to the edge, and every once in a while Romo will come out and get up on the edge of the edge of the couch and push Bob to the back so he doesn't fall off. Who does that? Romo, his uh, C and I dog. So there's he had the the blind dog has a seeing eye dog. Yeah, he here. I'll give you the quick the quick story is. Remember during COVID, <laughs> people were getting rid of their animals and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Bob's mom was just you know let out into the wilderness, and she ended up having Bob in a pig farm, and. And then something happened to her and she disappeared. So Bob was raised by pigs and he doesn't bark. He only grunts like a pig because that's the only language he knows. Am I supposed to believe, am I supposed to believe this whole story? It's completely true. And if you heard Bob, you'd go, that dog is snorting like a pig. And I go, yeah, he's talking. He doesn't know how to bark because he only grew up with pigs. So he was eventually picked up, and they discovered that he was blind, and um, he was in a kennel, and um, the dog next door adopted him to take care of him because he knows he can't see. And here we are, blind Bob and Modesto. You can you can look him up. He's got a, I, I built a site for him on uh, Instagram. He's uh, quite the piece of work, Bob. He loves me. He loves so, you. Yeah, he does. He loves me. He, me and Bob. He sees me coming. Well, he doesn't go, see hey, Bob, you coming. He, he he doesn't see you coming. No, he hears me. He sends. I yell, "Hey, Bob!" Coming. And he comes just flying out the door. Well, I had a blind cat once. Cat who went yeah. blind, and she she got around better than the ones who had sight. You know, he does really good when it when it's like dinner time. Mm-hmm. Romo will come in and push Bob to the bowl so he can eat. Well, the thing is, uh-huh. Mike, with my with my blind cat, I found that cats really probably most of the time do not use their eyes, but they use their yeah. senses more than they use their eyes. You know, Bob uses his tongue a lot. I mean, we moved into an absolutely new apartment when we moved to California, and uh, it was a two level thing. Okay, where there were, the bedroom was upstairs, and this cat walked in the door blind and negotiated everywhere perfectly yeah and the other cats were still sniffing around trying to figure out where they were you know yeah i can yell i want to get it yeah no go ahead bob's on the other end of the house i can yell his name and he'll kind of come sliding out here yeah well i wanted to uh get to something because it was it was last week that it happened and we should probably talk about it because you were imminently involved, and that's O.J. Simpson. Yeah. You went to the trial. We did. We, did. we went. It was me, Mike Barty, and Lisa Carr decided to go down to the trial. Lisa picks the hotel. She decides we're going to stay in Long Beach, California, mm-hmm. at the Hilton, the fancy Hilton. Well, what she doesn't realize is that Hilton builds their hotels in demilitarized zones in towns. So anyways, we go down there. We're hanging out with the uh, OJ uh, Army, the, uh, what they call them? They call them um, Camp OJ. We got, we the press brought us in and let us hang out. And um, I uh, we were taking pictures next to Annie Leibowitz and Every day, the guys would all come running in, you know, the, the uh, lawyers. So we got to see that whole thing. 
Mike Morty at one point decides he wants to take a picture of OJ arriving, and the cops dove on him. <laughs> like, well, guess we're not supposed to do that. So, um, the end now, of the now first were you we that, were you reporting back to the radio program on this? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, we I, I, I didn't remember before. it. Okay, you had to remind me. But then again, I'm yeah, an yeah. old man and I forget stuff. So the the first time we go back to the hotel room in. Lovely Long Beach, we get in the elevator, the three of us, and we're going up in the elevator and realize Huggy Bear and his um, employee were in the elevator with us. This guy in a long fur coat, big hat, and a hooker. And we, we both kind of looked at Lisa and went, did you not know this Long Beach Hilton was the prime location for prostitution in the area? And she's like, well, oh, it's a Hilton. I'm like, yeah, okay. So the next day we it's get the a Hooker extra Hilton. Room. It's known as the Hooker Hilton, I guess. Yeah, the Hooker Hilton. So the next day we go back down to, to the thing. And well, that was back in the days with no cell phones. So we had to double park the car. And we, um, it was in front of the driveway to get into the, to the, uh, courthouse and I double parked the car and I was talking to you and all of a sudden the car pulls up and wants in and I'm talking to you and the car is parked um nobody could get by and all of a sudden guy gets out of the car it was uh Judge Ito <laughs> and I'm like uh oh we have a problem I got I have to get short you need to move that car, sir. You know, are you part of the uh, press? And I'm like, oh no, I'm just making a call here. I, uh, I know what he's talking about. And you, did, was you didn't have terrible. any press credentials, by the way, did you? No, not then. No. Oh. And Eno just wanted me the hell out of the way. I mean, he was just like, no, get your car out of the way. And I'm like, uh, I'm sorry, sir. I like pretending like I don't know who this, you know, four foot Japanese guy is. You didn't know it was Ito at the time. No, oh, I did. Oh, you did. But I didn't want him to know that I knew that I was doing something wrong. And next thing you know, the you know the sheriff's department or the court police would be out there dragging me along. Because they had, there was so much of a press credential crowd out there that I mean there were hundreds of guys. They were basically just living there in front of the courthouse. I mean, they had dampers and trailers and it, it was amazing. So then, then after that, we, we go back to the hotel and we're going back to the hotel, we get about two blocks away. And the, the, the uh, Hilton is surrounded by police. And, uh, and I'm like, you know, Joe, well, maybe they're after Huggy Bear from last night. And so we're like, well, I, we're staying in this hotel. We got to get in there. And, and so we roll up to the to the police barricade. And the guy goes, "There's an ongoing shooting at the Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot go to your room." I'm sure I go, Lisa. You're no longer in charge of picking hotels. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm bad enough, but you know, first we got Huggy Bear, which is good, but. Now they're shooting in the rooms. So it was uh, it was a good trip, I think. You know, uh, I ran into OJ about, probably about three years before that. I was at a swingers party in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And I'm turning around talking to somebody and all of a sudden he get hit in the back. And I'm like, I hear, oh man. And I turn around and it was OJ and Nicole. They were at the swingers gathering in the city. Uh, and what okay, gathering? A, huh? a what kind of gathering? Swingers. Swingers? Swingers, yeah. You know. Those are people that trade swing. wives and things yeah. like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not that I don't know who swingers are. Of because, course not. Well, because I, I used to have a free pass to Plato's Retreat. Which was kind of yeah, like a I mean, club. Yeah. Sometimes it's just fun to go do something weird. So the next day you have something to talk about. 
They had a place and here. So they had a o place. OJ bounced yeah. into me. Oh, really? Yeah, and he apologized. Hmm. And then when Nicole died, I went, hey, that was that girl at the swinger party with uh, OJ. So they were at a swingers party? Yeah. They never talked about that. I know. <laughs> yeah, he was, well, maybe, maybe he was there like I was there looking for a story for the following day. Really? Yeah, I mean, just because you go to a swingers party doesn't mean you're a swinger. It means maybe you just want to watch TV in 3D live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I you know, know but yeah. Um, yeah, we went down while we were down there. We went to the Mezzaluna, and I think we, I think the station we were giving away had a promotion. We came back because we stole the outgoing laundry at the Mezzaluna where Ron Goldman worked. Mm -hmm. I think we were giving away um, uh, waiters' uniforms and uh, tablecloths when we came back because we had a bunch of those. Wow. Wow. Anything for a promotion, you know? Well, anyway, did you ever get into the trial? No. I, I got into the Menendez trial several times, but there you could not get near. I mean, I, uh, the press had that thing all locked up. There were only like 30, 40 seats in there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you couldn't get in. You could get in. You had to, there was a, a lottery system for um, the Menendez trial, but there was no lottery system for OJ. It was just first come, first serve? No, you, the all the press had bought their way in. They specifically bought chairs. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. And so, so you, you just watch this from the outside. But I mean, having Judge Ito tell you to move your goddamn car, that, that's a memory that will last. I was pretty damn happy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, the only time I ever met up with OJ was when we went to the Olympics in Barcelona. And there is a church, I forget the name of the church right now, that's at the top of a hill. And so we went up there to kind of see it. And as we're walking around, who's walking around as well? In fact, I even have a piece of videotape with him, but I, it's in storage somewhere. That was OJ. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So that was the closest I ever got to OJ. Yeah, well, we've all ran into him at some point, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. OJ. So, you know. Um, well, you know, now he's gone. Yes, he is, isn't he? And so is the killer. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I, everybody goes around and they say, well, now that he's dead, we can say he did it. No, you can't. No. No, I mean, he was found not guilty, all right, of murdering Nicole Simpson. Now, I was right. watching, who was I watching last night who made the statement that, well, but, uh, you know, he was found guilty in the civil case, so he was found guilty of murder in the civil case. He was, the civil case was not about murder. No, it's, yeah. it's about culpability or whatever. Culpability, it's a, it's a civil suit. You're suing somebody for something. And you're suing him because you think he was responsible at least for not doing anything, whatever. Right. So it always made me kind of mad that once he was found not guilty, the world did not want to accept the verdict, and so therefore he still couldn't work. You know, right. it should be that when he was found not guilty, he should be making the next Naked Gun movie, right? Because that's right. the kind of country we live in. Okay, you proved yourself not guilty. We have to accept that. I may not believe it, but we have to accept it. Come right. be in our movie. That's that, the system, and that's how it works. Hmm? I said, that's the system, and that's how it works. And exactly. So, but I mean, people just, you know, so... There was this whole thing about, I was watching Bill Murray went, well, now that he's dead, we can say he's guilty. No, you can't. He was never found guilty of anything. He was only found culpable in a civil case, but that, you know, the preponderance of evidence that you need in a civil case is nothing. Much less. Much less than you would ever have to have in a criminal uh, uh, trial. Also, that I did it book that... Um, well, my friend Judith Reagan... Right. Uh, she uh, published a book called If I Did It, by, and it was written right. by O.J. Simpson. 
And it was a great idea for a book because he didn't have to admit he did it, but he could say, if I did it, and this is what the book was about, here's how I would have done it. Okay. The book the book is running number one on Amazon this morning. I don't know where the book is. Oh yeah, the oh, the uh, the. Uh, oh, it's on fire. No, but here's the thing. Goldman owns she, it. She yeah, she got fired. She got her deal nixed by Murdoch after that, and he didn't let her. He she could didn't even have the rights to the publishing company that had her name on it. Reagan Books. I right. liked Judith a lot. Judith became a very good friend, and I thought the world of her. Um, even though she's a right winger, or maybe she's not. I don't know. You, you know, you know who her boyfriend used to be, uh, Rudy Giuliani's partner, uh, the former d uh, police chief of New York City. Oh yeah, uh, Carrick. Um, Bernard uh, uh, Carrick. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bernard Carrick is it? Yeah, uh, that was her boyfriend. And I went, but to with a big fat blob at the time, I don't know why you would want him, but I, I was walking down the street with Judith one day and I, I went back to her apartment and I said, Judith, you know, I think the world of you. I think you're, you're bright and you're smart and you're intelligent. Why the fuck did you go out with Bernard Carrick? And she says, give me a bad time. Tell me I'm terrible, but I love power. She said, power is an aphrodisiac, she said, for me. And she said, that's why I went with him. I said, by the way, was were he and Giuliani criminals? She says, you don't know the half of it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. She said, absolute crooks, both of them. And Carrick went to jail, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And Rudy is basically, uh, you know, he's Rudy. America's mayor. He he's broke. He's, he hasn't had a yeah. penny. And his old didn't get a job. And his old pal Donald won't help him. No. And he got in all this trouble because he was defending Donald. You know. So. They all think he's going to help him in the end. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, on, on the next episode that we do here, I want to talk to you about serial killers I have known. Oh, there you go. Because you made that a hobby. I, I did, for well, better or worse. But we'll get into that did. next time. Because right. that, that was really, I found, a phenomenal part of your existence. It was, uh, well, I, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think back on it and it, it's, it, it feels weird now. So I, I don't even remember. You kept calling, you called us every day while you were down there, right? And Lisa Carr was our traffic woman at the time. Right. And before Bubbles. And it, it, yeah. Bubbles. And th then she quit and uh, went to some radio station or something. And so I then had the, um, it was a thing called uh, Metro Traffic. They supplied right. the newscasts. Uh, I don't think our station even paid them. They just got the, uh, they got the uh, commercial inventory right. for that. And so they controlled who they had hired as a traffic person. And I said, right. I wanted Bub. So they made an exemption. I was the only station he did. He was hired by Metro Traffic to work my show. And yeah. that was because Lisa Carr left. By the way, traffic woman named Lisa Carr. Dude, I thought that was her name. It's not. No. And I thought for a long time, I thought, Wow, you have the perfect name for the job that you do. Yeah. And she goes, what do you mean? And I go, car. I mean, my God. And and she goes, my last name is Trulam. And I went, no. And that was like yeah, months and months and months I'd known her. And before I realized her name was not Lisa Clark. Well, my name is Alex Bennett. Right. But you know that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did not know that. Really? No, I did. no. I knew that your yeah, name was yeah, Bennett. Yeah, mine, mine was, is is an Alex Bennett. Yeah, right. But I did not know about Lisa. Howard Stern accused me once of being ashamed of being a Jew because I didn't use my real name. 
And I was, I was thinking to myself, you know, if my name was Stern, I don't think I would have changed it, okay? But it happened to be yeah. Schwarzman. Try an unwieldy name like that. Yeah. It's the Ben the Schwarzman, Schwarzman Show. Hi, how are you, folks? Da, 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 yeah. Yeah, ridiculous. Don't be, don't be absurd. Well, next time we come together, I want to talk about, but in fact, We'll be doing that in a few moments, but that'll be on I uh, believe in we a probably week or are, so. Yeah. yeah. Bob's anyway, asleep th- over here now. But we got uh, we got the whole uh, thing done with uh, the uh, juice. With the juice. The juice is loose. Anyway, loose. talk to you next time. Yes, sir, buddy. Bye, bye. Now in its ninth year, this is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh boy, caught it just in time, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the theme was playing, but it wasn't playing, and it was anyway. Hello, everybody. How are you? I got to do a few things here. Hold on. I wasn't on last night, uh, not for any other particular reason, but that occasionally I'd like to take a night off the, of a night that I was supposed to work. Okay, and uh, uh, so I decided to. Uh, take last night off uh, to kind of give myself a mental health day as it were you know I just been feeling tired and I just wanted to get some rest so today I feel kind of like doing the show I mean I'm still tired but I've decided that the reason I'm tired all the time is I'm old okay that's it thank you very much folks I'm tired because I'm old anyway where are we Mm. let me get some coffee and then we have some people waiting to come on not a lot but quality folks folks let me see here um admit all okay i might just push to admit all there we go okay and uh, here they come folks uh there's josh wheeler and uh Somewhere in all that fog is Brian Neary. There we go. He turned himself on. Hi, Brian. How are you? I turned myself on. Sounds you turned like yourself that. on? Yeah, well, you know, self, uh, self whatever. I don't know. Self abuse. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and hello to Josh Wheeler. How are you doing, Josh? Good. How are you doing? I'm okay. And here comes uh, Alan. Uh, he's coming in here shortly. There we go. Where are you? There's Alan. Hi, Alan. How you doing? Hi, Alex. Yeah. And Hello, uh, let me see here. That's about it. Okay, that'll take care of it for now. Uh, and uh, um, hi, so, uh, anybody doing anything interesting, Josh? Anything interesting? Interesting? Um, probably not. Probably not, huh? Probably not. Yeah, right, let me get some of my, uh, I like my soda here. This is my favorite soda. This is my pineapple coconut ice. There we go. Sounds good. Probably not on my diet, though. Why not on your diet? Water. Well, this is water. Ba- this is water. This is zero. Oh, no, got- there's no sugar? No sugar. No. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. All right. No, this I, is I'm called. surprised the first news out of your mouth wasn't that uh, if you heard the news that Israel uh, attacked, retaliated I, against Iran about an hour ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, well. You know, you allowed yourself to get the sympathy again of the world and you blew the, you know, the currency. Yeah. Yeah. Is I mean, is he not out of his mind? Netanyahu. Yeah, what does he think? Does he think Iran's just going to stand there and say, "Okay, our missiles for your missiles have a nice day"? Well, they, they they said they're going to retaliate again. Well, to begin with, remember that what they were retaliating for the other day was yeah. the attack on an air base, I believe, in another country that was in, there in but Syria, killed, killed yeah. some of their people. So this was in retaliation for that. And once they did that, they said, "That's the retaliation. Now we're through." That's what they yep. said. Yeah, I know. But no, no, Netanyahu's got to go attack. Did he send it into Iran? No, I think so. That was yeah. I caught. The, I was having sushi with Phil, and that was the the caption. Iran, uh, Israel retaliates 
against Iran. I didn't read much more than that. So. Wow. So, you know, uh, I mean, Israel, so. according to NBC Live, uh, Israel carried out operation in Iran, person familiar with blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. Hmm. It is what it is. Not, not too bright on the part of Netanyahu. I you agree. know, you, you have the sympathy, sympathy of the world again, slightly, because you lost it all with that, you know. And you, again, you've blown your collateral. Am I right, Josh? Well, I'm not sure what they were doing. I mean, um, well, they were blowing up things, obviously. Right, but the so I don't think they were blowing up things just to blow up things. They, I'm sure, they have a strategic objective in mind. So, what did they blow up? For example, uh, Iran launched a number of missiles and drones at them that they shot down. Okay, that's the first round. Now, if the retaliation was to bomb a plant that made replacement parts for the, the drones and things that attacked them, then that's a smart retaliation. It's, it's a proportionate response, and it now limits their ability to uh, make more drones or fix drones that are in service, leaving them with only so many. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it just... What does it say on your, in your information there, uh, Alan? I, I haven't read the whole thing. Give me a minute. I mean, I'm sure they didn't just throw a dart at a map and, and uh, shoot a missile at a random building. So, you know, uh, maybe they happen to know where the command and control headquarters was located that directed the attack toward them. So they proportionally struck that command and control headquarters. More than likely, 99.9% .9 killing only active military personnel and maybe you know i mean i don't know i mean it could go on still and on and on. i mean you know you, 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 this thing has got to stop and and you're not ending anything here you know you're simply mm -hmm. inciting more it says iran is is uh, retaliated back I, so it has we'll just figure. retaliated back yeah it says iran fires air defense batteries uh, in providences near explosions heard near I-S-F-A-H-A-N, however you pronounce the city name. Hmm. So, I don't know. I'll look, I'll look more at it while we're talking. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think, I think it's, it happened so quick. There's not a lot of news on it right now. I'm looking at AP and CNN basically. Yeah, before we're through, we're going to be in a full out war in the Middle East. Yep. And, and the question is, what side do we take? Or don't we t take any sides? Well, I, I think Biden has made it clear he's going to stand by Israel. So. Well, he's going to stand by Israel. But, if but he Israel says we're not making... going to join in on the retaliation. So you know, We're not joining in on the retaliation. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So Multiple explosions. They retaliate. It's going to go back and forth. The trouble is, is Iran is shooting missiles across, um, um, you know, a couple countries. To hit, they're they're shooting them across Iraq in order to hit Israel. So there's a chance that one of these missiles isn't going to make it and uh, hit another country, and that's going to start a big. Well, maybe we'll see World War Three. Oh, that's good. I get to see World War Three before I go to the Great Beyond. Yeah. That's I wonderful. thought you took yesterday off because you got your money and you wanted to celebrate. No, no. The money's coming next week. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> Good. Because One today I had to run down. I had to run down and get a piece of paper notarized. See, that the, the uh, uh, Shecky left me the money. Okay. We know. And he left it to Alex Bennett. Oh, whoops. And I told <laughs> them that's not my real name. My real name is Bennett Schwarzman. And if you're going to send me some money it should be in that name sure. and they said we'll work on that and so on so today they had me go down and do another notari notarized thing yeah. that says my name i'm i'm bennett schwarzman but i use the professional name alex bennett and they said Mark. just send it to us by uh by fat by uh, what do you call it uh, email so i sent it to them by email and they've got that and they said that they're going to cut the checks and send them out by the end of next week. So. Nice. You might live long enough to get the well, check. Well, yeah, yeah, but I don't know if we, we can walk 
That's the problem. I mean, oh, you go go on a river cruise or something. We'll go on a river cruise and we'll try some walking. And if you know, if we walk, uh, you know, and we do okay, we'll walk some more. You know, and they just, probably have river cruises in the Hudson River. No, I don't. I'm not. What we're going to do initially is we're just going to take a, uh, you know, uh, make a plane arrangement, as it were. A reservation uh, to go somewhere and stay there for like about four or five days just, nice. just to get out of the country you know and then we'll plan the longer bigger trips yeah 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 so i'll see you guys around no, i'll be i'll be off for i don't think i'm going to be able to do much from overseas to be honest with you because i tried to think what time i would have to be awake to do this show say <clears throat> in europe and I'd have to be up at, what, 4.30 in the morning to do the show? I'm sorry. I'm on vacation. Not that I want to discourage you from the show, but you, you owe it to yourself and Marjorie to take the time off. Yeah. Don't worry about the show. It'll be here when you come back. I'm sure you will. Anybody want to host it while I'm gone? How about you? Uh, uh, Je Jeff and Pam. The Jeff and Pam show. The Jeff and Pam very show. Happy huh? That's cute. I said I'd be very happy to help. You'd be very happy to help. What's wrong with your voice tonight? <clears throat> a little bit of a cold. Oh, you have a bit of a cold. Oh, yeah. Just stay behind. Stay, stay back. Stay back. You don't want to give it to any of us. Yeah. You know, it's Pam a... is uh, asleep. I'm not going to make her up there. I, I can't hear you well. Is there something wrong really? with his audio? Yeah, he needs to turn his volume up a little bit. Hmm. No, it's, now, it's, now, he, now we can't even hear him. Yeah, that really, no. it sounds terrible. It, yeah, it's a little better, Jeff. Time for a new computer, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, time for a new computer. That sounds good. It's only about 15 years or something. Anyway, anyway, so uh, we, we, we're gonna we're, we'll take some kind of short vacation, and then we'll take a more extensive one once we we got to go find a travel agent. Is what we got to find. I'm you know. Somebody yep. who can say, okay, now you need you need somebody to pick you up at the airport, and you need some hotel here in this town, and so on. Well, I'm not going to San Francisco, but when I do, I will call you, Brian. Tell me where you're going to go. Huh? Tell me where you're going to go. You don't know where I'm going to go? Yeah, tell me where you're going to go. Oh, I'm going to go to... Um, Hawaii. I don't know. I think we, we'd like to go to Paris, but over like a weekend or something, but with the Olympics coming up, I don't want to get close to Paris. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, you know, I've been to towns in the middle of a, of a uh, uh, when there's uh, Olympics going on, like in Barcelona and in Lillehammer and places like that. But I went there and it was all arranged by Coca-Cola and they had rooms ready for us and all of that. You know, and it was kind of, you were kind of in the middle of it and it was kind of exciting. And then you got on a, in a car and you went to the airport and you left, right? Mm -hmm. But if you go there for, like you want to go for the weekend and there's just a lot of travel because of the uh, of the Olympics coming up, I don't want to do that. So, I don't know, maybe we'll go to some place like Italy or Spain or... Mm -hmm. But some place we can just hop on a plane right now and then have something maybe book as a hotel room and you know i did a great run when i maybe i said this before but uh i did some work in sweden every like two years and then i won the first time i was there mm -hmm. from sweden after i was done i i flew down to milan and stayed at this beautiful lake there and then drove to venice went there for a couple of days and then drove down through italy uh, down where my parents are near Pisa, and my, my grandparents actually near Pisa, and then went to Rome for a few days. Well, the I, drives are beautiful, beautiful, and it's not like all day. It's like two, three hours, and, you know, you stop and get cappuccinos and all that stuff. Well, I mean, I, listen, I mean, the thing I love to do it, when I go to Europe is rent a car. 
Yeah, oh, yeah. And then drive. You know. You're not driving. <laughs> and I'm, I don't think I can drive anymore. I just don't. Not in Italy. No, 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 no. Well, no, I did pretty well in Italy. Wasn't that crazy? You know. I'll tell you didn't, you rent, didn't you rent a Ferrari while you were there, Brian? <laughs> I'll tell you. No. I'll tell you. You got to show up in style. I tell you where it was more crazy, was in uh, in uh, France, because they have, say, you have two lanes, three lanes going down a road. If there, the road on the very outside is called the passing lane, mm-hmm. but people are driving all the time in the passing lane and never leave the passing lane because, well, they're passing everybody. Mm-hmm. Right? And you're allowed to go as fast as you want to go in the passing lane. And so these people come up right behind you if you're in the passing lane. Get the hell over. You know, yeah. so that That'd drove me nuts. Italy wasn't that bad. You know, and you, and you drive on the normal side, you know, like the U.S. does. So it, it's good. I like it. The, the worst traffic jam I've ever been in was in Italy. For some reason, I'm driving along, we're going to the lakes, right? And all of a sudden, uh, there's a cop and he says, take the side road. Mm. And we go to take the side road, and as soon as we hit it, it's backed up all the way to the lakes. (laughs) It took us like a half a day to get about 10 miles, but finally it loosened up and we were okay. But it was the worst traffic jam I've ever been in in my life, easily. Mm. So, but uh, you know, I just I just don't know if I can drive anymore to tell you the truth. And, uh, but you know, I mean, we, we've got enough money now that we can hire somebody to drive us and do stuff like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes, right, right. Well, and then when you're in Rome, you just do the hop on, hop off bus. It goes to Vatican, it goes to Colosseum, it goes, you know, all those places. So it's yeah, a lot of fun. yeah. I've never, you know, I've never been to Rome. Uh, oh, really? So maybe that's one place we want to go, you know. But um, and I love Spain. I just love Spain. I'm talking. You, you know why I love all these different places? The goddamn food. Yeah. You know, there you go to Italy. There is no better food anywhere on the planet. Okay, and you can, you can, as I said before, you can stop off at a gas station, and if they've got a little restaurant in there, and you go in to have something to eat, it's incredible. It's you know, and you go, wait, this is a gas station. I can't believe, uh, I can't even begin to imagine what a regular good restaurant, top-notch restaurant, is like here. I mean, one time we were we were staying. We, we I don't know. I can't remember what town we even stayed in, and it was a small town. But we just pulled over and we wanted to go to sleep. Okay, so we go to the hotel. We find a hotel, and we said, "Is there a restaurant anywhere nearby?" And they says, "Oh, down the street in town." And we went into town. The town was empty. All right, and we went into this restaurant in front of it, and it didn't look that great. And we walk in, and the restaurant visually was incredible. I mean, I, I can't begin to tell you what it looked like exactly, but there were, there were murals on the ceilings and everything. And it was this great, incredible dining room. And then we ordered dinner, and everything we ate was top notch. It was just amazing. And then we left, and I'll never be able to find that restaurant again. You know? (laughs) Kind of like, I I remember years ago, I was doing my radio show, and a couple of women um, called me up and said, can we take you out after the show? And I said, okay, go ahead, kidnap me. I don't care. What are you going to (laughs) do? So they got in the car. They They took me in their car. And we went over to Queens. In the middle of nowhere in Queens is a little town called Corona, a little area called Corona, Queens. Mm -hmm. And there was a place called the Lemon Ice King of Corona. Mm -hmm. And I went in there and we had lemon ices. And they said, these are gonna be the best lemon ices you've ever had in your life. And I had a lemon ice. And they were right. It was the best lemon ice you could get anywhere. 
Okay. What's a lemon ice? A lemon ice is basically crushed ice with some lemon sauce mm. on it, you know, lemon syrup on it. Oh, but it has good. to be the right lemon syrup, and I don't know, maybe the ice crushed to the perfect consistency or whatever. All I know is that it was just absolutely out of this world. Hmm. And then we left, and we came back to Manhattan, and I never was able to find that place again. Hmm. <laughs> Except about two years ago, when he was still living here, Albert Reynoso hmm. took me around Corona, Queens, and I said, you know, I had lemon ice at a place here called the lemon ice king of corona he says of course <laughs> right down the street and we, i found it again mm. and it wasn't as good as it used to be yeah <laughs> but then again nothing is ever as good as it used to be you know <clears throat> so uh hello there kevin hey alex how are you yeah i know it's last night because i can tell when somebody tries to sign in to zoom even if i'm not even on it uh, that they tried. I get an email. And mm. Kevin tried to call the show last night. I'm sorry. I, I did inform everybody on the Facebook page, but apparently he didn't try. Yeah, I don't get on Facebook every day, so. Yeah, so I wanted to, so I wanted mm. to apologize to you because. No worries, no you're worries. Right. You don't have to apologize. Oh, here comes Tony. Yeah. I don't need to apologize to him. I tried to tell him, but he wouldn't listen. What? <laughs> I tried to tell Kevin, but he wouldn't listen. He just doesn't. <laughs> I was working. I didn't look at nothing until I got home, and then I was it came right up here, and I went, "Oh shit!" Well, I'm yeah. sitting here picking my nose. I seen Charlie's message when I was when he was on the YouTube. Yeah, yeah. There, there's Tony, by the way. Hey, Alex, I got to tell you something. I heard your thing with the Corona Rice King. Do you know you were across the street, the Parkside Restaurant, Italian? That's where Gotti held court. In the 80s. You were right there. That was the 70s. So he was probably there too at that time. This was the 70s. Yeah. This was the, uh, yeah. yeah, this so was the 70s. Coming up in power, but the park side's right across the street from the Ice King. Like right there. So you know the Lemon Ice King of Corona. Yeah. I, I used to bike ride from my house to it. Yeah. It's still yeah. there. Still there. Yeah. And still, I still get ice. Definitely the Lemon Ice King of Corona. So. And they put the little fruit in. Remember, did you get like the, you got the cherry? They put the cherries in it. They would cut the cherry up. No, I didn't try that. That's, oh, if they do the cherry ice. No, Alex, it's called the, the lemon ice king of Corona, not the cherry ice king of Corona. No, but sometimes the cherry now ice, they put cherries in it sometimes, if you ask them. They actually oh, do Oh, really? That. Yeah, they do, yeah. Oh, okay. They kind of slice If I it. ever get back there again. Yeah, yeah it's, it's still there, Alex. That's like, forget it. I mean, if Shecky were still alive, I'd ask him to drive me over yeah. there. I used yeah. to be able to bike from my house probably like 20 minutes, maybe yeah. half hour. Yeah. But anyway, so um, uh, anyway, uh, let me see here. Uh, well, you know, we've been having this uh, little trial going on here. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's right. uh, <laughs> and they've got, they've picked the whole jury. They finally picked the 12. It. I mean, now 12 they need, they need and when they have one alternate so far. They need, uh, what is it, uh, five more alternates. And then it's off to the races. I think the reason they're getting through the uh, picking of the jury so fast is I think Trump wants to get out of there. You know, I don't think he wants to be there. You know, he, he'd rather the trial went on without him. Oh, I'm missing going out and, and, and running for office, running for president. Well, you know, the thing is, you haven't been nominated yet, you <laughs> asshole. So you're not running yet, technically. Am I right, Josh? That's under uh, the party's official designation. I mean, he's running. If he says he's running, I mean, he's campaigning to be elected president. Yeah, but is that an excuse not to show up for your court trial? Oh, no, I don't think that. I mean, I think he's legitimately considered a candidate, but there's no reason not to show up for your criminal trial. You're required to be there. You're required to be there. If that's the law, that's the law. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, applies to everybody, Yeah. in my opinion. And today, JFK Jr. got a slam from his entire family. Yeah, they disowned him today, you that? Basically, <laughs> they disowned him, yeah. I was going to say, they disowned him, Alex. I said, oh. Yeah. Alex, who, which one is his father? I was trying to Google that. Do you know who his dad is? Robert Kennedy. It is? Yes. Oh, shit. What happened to him? 
he well, got his shot name in the head. is Robert Kennedy Jr. What what, what do you mean? Do you who was that? his father? No, his Shit. father was Liberace. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> he his father got shot in the head, Tony. No, I mean, what happened to uh, him to be backing Trump? You would think. I mean, he's not backing Trump. Okay. I think he's helping him though. He's trying. No, he's not backing no, Trump. Fact, he's, he's backing Robert Kennedy Jr. Right. But they think he's trying to take votes away from uh, Biden. They're trying to say. I don't. I don't think so. The, the fact some people are saying he may take votes away from Trump. Right. Because there are a lot of people who don't want to vote, for, who really don't like Trump, who are Republicans, who would never allow themselves to vote for a Democrat. So they won't vote for Biden, but they really don't want to vote for Trump. But if those were the only two choices, but if there's a third choice, they might go with it, you know. Uh, so uh, the, the, what I saw today was they were saying the person he's going to hurt the most is is uh, is uh, Trump. Hope you're right. Yeah, but I mean the whole family. I mean, fifteen of them came out. Yeah, they all threw him under the bus. I loved it. And they <laughs> never said. <laughs> yeah. And, no, and they never said his name once. Oh, yeah. They just mm -hmm. said, we're here to support Biden. Yeah. Yeah. And then I had to watch it two times because I thought it was like, is this SNL or what's going on? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Well, the other thing that was fun is there was one, one of the Kennedys, a woman, was up there giving a speech, and she sh sounds like Robert Kennedy Jr. You know that? Yeah, she was like was stuttering, but uh, like uh, well, she sounded more like Catherine Hepburn. Yes, yeah. it's his sister, huh? It uh, was his sister, the blonde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah but That's why I was wondering like, if it ran that disease ran in the family because it's a <laughs> it's a disease. I don't know um, if it's a disease. I, I, it has something to do with the larynx or something. I've heard of it before, and I heard him, and I, I meant to look it up because I, I forgot. It's larynxitis. It's something to do with the muscles in the throat. Well, how yeah. come then two members of the family got it? I don't know. That's what I was asking my wife. I said, do you know what that disease was? And she said, no, and I went to look it up, and then I got distracted. Yeah, yeah. But I found I it, really uh, I found it kind it. of interesting that, uh, uh, you know, that uh, the, that family so hates Robert Kennedy Jr., they love him, huh? but they don't like him. They love him, but they don't like him. <laughs> well, that's a good way of putting it. It's a good Catholic family. Yeah, right. Come on, let's go out and have 20 kids. Yeah. You know. And we'll disown them, but we'll love them. Yeah, yeah. Well. I know. Whatever, you know. But uh, they, uh, they came up with... Uh, they they what they did is they had five people for the up for the jury, excuse me, seven people for the jury, and seven, then they yeah, had to do seven. away with two of them. I was just reading it. What happened with that? Well, one of them finally decided that they couldn't be obje you know objective, okay. Mm -hmm. And then the other one, uh, something he had written in a, you know, like a Facebook post or something that was anti-Trump, so. You know, well, you see, I feel that, like, mm. I can't stand Trump. I hate him, okay? Record this and play it if you bring me up for uh, jury duty, okay? I hate, I absolutely hate <laughs> Trump. I feel he's a complete and utter douchebag, all right? But put me on that jury and I will try to be as objective as I possibly can because that's my job. You know, so, I mean, I don't see why if somebody said something negative about Trump, in this case, they can't be objectionable or objective, excuse me, not objectionable. I'm always objectionable. Um, uh, but why, you know, you can't be objective. Um, so I mean, if they Most and then they ask, they ask the question, like that. do you have Most any opinion? Most people don't think like that. They'll think, I I hate him, blah 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 blah, and that's the way they think. They don't think objectionable, like objectionable. You know what I mean? Objective. Um, yeah, objectively uh, like that because you know it's the same thing with a local small 
trial or small court case. I went to a court case and, and I sat there through a court case and every bit of the court, the, the, uh, the case was, um, you know, the guy was supposed to be guilty, but they didn't cover the legal aspect of the, uh, the things that they were supposed to do. And we had to let him go because of what they didn't do. They didn't mm-hmm. fill out the right paperwork and that sort of thing. And, and they didn't, uh, you know, go through the right procedures to get this guy, uh, put away the way he was supposed to be. And you had to let him go. Yeah. And I didn't want to let him go. No, but you had to, but what else could you do? You had to, the law said that you had to do this, this, and this, and they did this, this, and that. Right. But a lot of people will go into some, things like that saying, well, he's still guilty, blah, blah, blah. You know, well, they won't it, change their mind. You know, I mean, they ask the question, uh, you know. Uh, not objective. Oh, do, do you have any feelings about Donald Trump? Well, listen, if you live in New York sta- City, okay, I'm sorry. You're going to have an opinion about Donald Trump because you've had to live with this guy for the last, you know, 40, 50 years that he's been in the public eye. Uh, you know, he's also been on television with a TV show. I don't know if that's a proper question to ask. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, most people have an opinion on Donald Trump. Maybe they don't ask that question. Huh? Yeah. Well, they Maybe do, they... yeah. They do. Oh. Well, and, and but... That's one of the first questions, because they're going to they're gonna filter people out real quick like that, obviously. Yeah. Okay. And then and then they get down to the people that are trying to not answer that question, and they're going to dig that out. So they're not dumb. The way yeah, they do these things. Yeah, but on the other hand, on the, the other way these hand, lawyers work. They're not stupid. To find somebody who's never heard of Donald Trump, to feel that somebody is so uh, um, uh, uh, available uh, because they can't, they don't have an opinion in the case, okay, or they are not aware of the case. I mean, you've got to get people who totally live in, a, in an igloo somewhere up north, up in... Uh, up in. He was president for four years. I mean, how could you not know yes, exactly. who or what he was? Yeah. But look at what Jimmy Kimmel does, and he asks people on the street questions about the president. They can't even name them. So there are people out there. There are people. But do, you want those, but do you want those people on a, tr- uh, a jury? Exactly. Well, that's the I other mean, side. If they have no sense of what's going on in this world, is that right. the kind of person you want to see trying somebody? Right. You, you ask them who the 49th president is, and they'll say George Washington. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, I... Um, I uh, absolutely uh, find it ridiculous. It was like a 49-page questionnaire or something they had to fill out. Yeah, and I think they get 30 minutes each with each one of them now that they filled the jury. Once they fill the full jury and the alternates, they still got to go back through them 30 minutes apiece, I believe, Hmm. and interview them 30 minutes apiece, and they'll dig more out of them. Well, let's see here. Six hours. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah another three hours nine hours it'll take then we can get on with the trial we can get on we can get well a, that's uh, if they don't find, if they don't bump anybody else out and have to go dig out some more jurors you know then we can uh, get on with the trial so that uh trump can get some good sleep going yeah he fell asleep they said the lady from the time well, he doesn't that. have his diet cokes with him <laughs> they gotta get him a two liter <laughs> you know wake up this is your fault <laughs> Yeah. Did you have a mole on the left cheek, I think. I don't know. I gotta look in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I mean it's all silly. It's all so you know, silly. But you know what's funny, Alex, how they want to move the trial out of New York because he feels of course it makes sense. His lawyers are trying to do everything possible because he knows they can get a fair trial. But you know what I find funny? What about all the regular people who are on trial in New York? Nobody gets anything moved. Like he wants everything, like a special treatment for everything. Well, if if you feel that a, a, a case is in the news too much and that you can't get a fair trial in this jurisdiction because too many people are have been fed negative news about it, that they can then ask for a change of venue. 
But I mean, what's the change of venue in this case? I, it would still have to be in the state of New York because it's a yes. case of New York against Trump. Am I right, Josh? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure they would have asked for, you know, like Westchester County or something along those lines. Right, right. So it would have to go, go to someplace like Westchester or whatever. But I don't think he would have a better chance there than in Manhattan. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm sure if he did, they'd be looking for 12 white men who all make more than $800,000 a year or whatever. You know, yeah. I mean, Could you turn your mic up just a little bit? It would be helpful to me if you can. Yeah. Uh, um, but, uh, you know, they, they're going to do everything they can to, you know, slow this trial up. Although I think Trump wants him to speed it up. I, he doesn't, he doesn't want to be there, you know. And Find him guilty and appeal it and ask for it to be moved out of Manhattan. That's what's going to happen. Well, you can appeal you it. Move you have to appeal it to an appeals court. And the appeals court then judges whether his appeal is proper or not. Uh, this isn't something you move out of the area. And you have to move it within case, the jurisdiction. The, the appeal will be allowed. Huh? It's a criminal case. The appeal will be allowed. You know? No, they, they will be able to appeal it as to whether the appellate court takes the case oh, I see or not. You okay. Right. You know, I mean, I've been through this myself because we had the landlord go to the appellate court, mm -hmm. and uh, the appellate court said, no, you don't have a case. So then they went to the appeals court and said, well, we want to have you look at the appellate court's decision. And they said, no going, you haven't got a case. So then they lost the case completely. There's no way they're going to win it now. You know, it's over with. So what's going to happen is, of course, Trump is going to go appeal it. He'll go to the appellate court and the appellate court might just say, fuck you, there's no case here. You know, or everything was done just properly, and uh, you were tri you were tried properly, and there's no problem here. So that's a possibility too. Okay, no. uh, but uh, and then he, I think he can then go to an appeals court. Let's go to the appellate court, then do an appeals court, and then he's over and over with, and then it's off to jail with him. You know what's funny, Alex? Though how he wants. Uh... He doesn't think he can get a fair trial and all this. This was the same guy who took a full page ad out in the New York Post for the Central Park Five and said fry him before the case. Right. But that's not going to sway anybody, potential jurors, either when they pick the paper up. It's not? No, exactly. Like, he's, he's getting what he deserves, finally, I think. Uh... No, he's not getting what he deserves. Not yet, but... He but, will but get what he deserves. I mean... See, you would not make a good judge. I mean, a good juror. Oh, if I was there, forget it. They would excuse well, me. Well, how many, people, how many people, people want to get off of that jury? Because, you know, to be on that jury means you're going to be in there for about six weeks. I was going to say, Alex, will they stay in a hotel or will they let them go home, you think? I don't know. It depends. I, think I, I the, asked my brother. He wasn't sure either. I think it's up to the judge. Because if I went home, I'd tell you every day what was going on. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just, I well, can't one of the people, him. one of the people who got let off today, got yeah. let off because they said that they felt that there was too much information about them that already went out, that their relatives and friends knew oh, they were on the jury, and they didn't want anybody to know who they were. That's another thing. Because they all they were going to do is be harassed and you know mm -hmm. get nasty phone calls and things like that. She said, I, 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 I'm not anonymous enough that uh, my family didn't realize it immediately. And, and she didn't tell them. She didn't yeah. tell them. They just knew. That's scary, yeah. Yeah, yeah so Trump she didn't want doesn't. She didn't want to be part of that. And that's well, all part of the intimidation that Trump is doing. You know, there are, yeah. I think, seven different uh, things about him right now, about his, his posts on social, Truth Social, Jesus, that like that uh, which is an oxymoron in and of itself um, uh, on Truth Social that uh, the judge has seven different counts against him of violating the gag order and so it's, the judge has not ruled yet what he's going to do about it 
Yeah, Trump just has to say one thing, one stupid thing, if people know who those people are. And... Oh, good time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't appreciate, I mean, the, the press was not helping that matter, if you ask me. I kept seeing these updates on the Washington Post, for example, where it would say, like, persp- the next perspective juror is a, was a 42-year-old white male married with three children who mm. works as a bricklayer in Manhattan and owns his own business and said uh. that his wife is a nurse at a local hospital. I mean, like, yeah. Jesus. Come the fuck yeah. on, man. Yeah, yeah they're given <laughs> just about <laughs> everything but their name. Well, just give me his fucking name. I mean, come on, yeah. you know. <laughs> the next juror, the next potential juror is a single guy from Queens who collects comic books. I'm reading my bell. I got a pack with your name on it. <laughs> oh. no, it's, it's hard to. We wouldn't even call the cops. No. I mean, I can understand why people wouldn't want to deal with it. I mean, it, you know, it's a huge. <laughs> well, 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 what has happened is Trump has also muddied the waters so bad that yeah. they expect they're going to get death threats and everything yeah, from people. Right. You can see it though, Alex. He's such a demon, really. I think he's well, that, this is this is what the judge was uh, 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 warning him against that anything that would do that it would uh, um, compromise the jury pool okay uh it would be considered uh something that he should not say on truth social yeah. I mean he should just keep his mouth shut altogether and say I will go for a fair and impartial uh, jury here and blah 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 and uh, we'll be okay, you know. But no, he can't do that. He, what he's doing is he feels if I can't be out there campaigning, I'll do it in the courtroom. Yeah. Okay, and that's what he's doing, and it's terrible. And those stupid Trump cronies are down there. My brother, his office is across, across. He had to go to another building, and they were down there, Trump twenty twenty four, waving their flags and shit. They're a bunch of psychos, really. It's like this. It is a cult of personality, really. I well, think. They have a right to protest. By the way, let me bring up something. This is interesting. An interesting question. Uh, here in New York, well, yesterday, as you may remember, I think it was yesterday, the chancellor of Columbia University spoke before Congress. And, of course, she didn't want to get nailed like the last people who went from universities got nailed. And she, there have been protests, pro-Palestinian protests at Columbia University. Today they brought in the cops to quash the demonstrations. Mm. Now, is that right or wrong? I mean, what they're saying is, their attitude is, if you're pro-Palestinian, if you're pro-Gazan, not, not pro-Hamas, Pro Gazan or pro uh, uh, Palestinian, then you're anti Semitic. Really? And they called these anti Semitic demonstrations when what they were were pro Palestinian demonstrations. And, you know, uh, uh, you got to remember my argument would be that uh, being anti Semitic is hating Jews as a whole. Not hating Israel, Israel mm-hmm. or Israelis. Israelis are a nation. Some of them, they are Jewish. But that doesn't mean that you're anti-Semitic because you're against Israel. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know why they uh, canceled them. I don't know if, uh, you know, if they were violating... Uh, no, they like- weren't. They, they, were, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were peacefully protesting as peacefully as you can protest when you got signs and you're chanting. Right. Okay. Yeah, which is a normal, you know. But they weren't a, causing riots or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if they didn't have any, you know, violent or anti-Semitic uh, rhetoric attached to their protest, then, you know, I would expect... Uh, but you see, they consider... Expect them to be allowed to continue on. So yeah, but is the, being anti-Israel being anti-Semitic? And that's uh, what they're equating it with. Yeah, it's not necessarily. I mean, it, it could be. I mean, just, I would say that depends on the individual. I mean, you know, but I'm sure it's possible people could be 
anti-Israel and not have it uh, ruminating from a anti-Semitic, you know, point of view. I'm sure that's entirely possible. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's just uh, uh, I find something really wrong in the context of a university, which mm-hmm. is a should be a bastion of free speech and higher learning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To suddenly quash any demonstration. Yeah, I'm, I'm right. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't know why they would do it, really. I mean, uh, if there wasn't some, you know, legal ground for, for doing it, um, and what I mean is, you know, something about the protest was outside the bounds, uh, then they probably shouldn't. I if, mean, I'm, if I think we, got scared from the last time, but what they failed to realize from the last time was that they – they weren't policing very well anti-Semitic activity on their campuses and they got called out on it and now they've overreacted to the point to where if even one person thinks what's my, about to happen might be anti-Semitic or interpreted that way, they just put a stop to it. When what they should have you know, really dealt with last time was protests like these can go on, but what we have to do a better job of taking care of on our campuses is when a student walks down you know, between buildings to go somewhere and someone yells, you know, go home, you dirty Jew or whatever. We're going to take care of that. That wasn't the case, though. These I were agree, pro- I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, yeah I mean, These were pro-Palestinian demonstrations. Yeah, I don't know the, the, the today I heard that. I don't know. But but I'm agreeing with you in, in principle that if that's the case, then, yeah, that's the and case. And I think the, the only reason. Neither overreacting. I think the only reason the cops were brought in is because that chancellor does not mm-hmm. want to lose her job like the other people well, did last that's month. That's what I was getting at, was they're, they're, rather than dealing with what should have been dealt with, which, like I said, was a more of a personal level, anti-Jewish, you know, uh, person-to-person type stuff, they're just overreacting. Well, at least to begin with, they were, pro, they, they were pro-Palestinian. They were probably anti-Israel. Okay, but you see, this Probably, is the this yeah. is the this is the thing I worried about all my life about Israel. Mm-hmm. From the time I can't tell you how long ago I was worried about this, you know, and that is basically, if we take it to its basis here, uh, that was basically that people would try to equate the nation of Israel, mm-hmm. which is a political entity. I think we will all agree mm. with Jews. And that's not the case. I'm not Israeli. I'm not even pro-Israel, to be very honest with you. But, I, you know, uh, I don't want you to then equate me with what they're doing. And the problem with Israel's existence and the way they, you know, when you, when you have a flag that's got the Star of David on it, mm-hmm. you're immediately trying to say, oh, we're Jewish. Well, that's fine. You are Jewish. But you don't represent me as a nation. And I, that always bothered me, that one day it was going to come home to roost, and now that's happening. You know, where they've made a political decision as a nation to do what they're doing in Gaza that has nothing to do with Jews all over the world, or Jews in America. And indirectly, you kind of... A Jewish person living in New York feels unsafe now because of that. Oh, yes, yeah, they, oh, absolutely. I mean, so true. I mean, uh, you know, uh, Netanyahu has created more anti-Semitism than any other single human being I can think of. Mm. Uh, yeah, and look, and I, so I, I was always worried about that. And, and people would say to me, well, Israel, don't you want to go move to Israel because you're Jewish? I said, I have no reason to go to Israel. The I fucking, don't. you know, it's a desert out there. What am no, I going to go there for? You know, you know I can go to Arizona for crying out loud. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, to, to me, Netanyahu, I mean, i not really into all these pro-Palestinian protests and, you know, it's, and all that. But, I mean, but I'll agree that, you know, he he is not the person who needs to lead the Israelis through this crisis. Right. Period. Well, I, I don't think he has any business being the prime minister of Israel, even in peacetime, let alone in this time. They need to find someone who was serious about fixing their problem. And I don't think he's fixing the problem. I think the gra- the glass has been cracked here for a long time, and he's not doing anything to keep it from getting any worse. Well, 
Well, years ago when Vanessa Redgrave was pro-Palestinian, this is the first time I remember myself on the air, and this was, God, gee, I don't know if this goes back all the way to me being on the air doing a talk show in Minneapolis. Uh, I defended her saying, you know, I'm, pro I'm, I'm, I'm pro-Palestinian myself. I think they should have a homeland. Uh, you know, and I, I defended the Palestinians. But there's no inconsistency with being Jewish and being pro-Palestinian. After all, basically, we showed up wearing the same dress anyway. I mean, we're both Semitic races, you know, and, and why can't I be sympathetic towards another Semitic group? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Plain and simple. Okay, you can send your, your hate mail to, uh, my name is Howard Stern. <laughs> you do it to Howard. <laughs> just send your letters to me at SiriusXM. They need to move on from the, the Netanyahu situation. And look, I, I'll agree that, you know, I, I can agree with, you know, like I've heard, you know, a few people say a Joe Scarborough or whatever. You know, look, if you go to a, an Israeli right now, a regular Israeli, and you knock on the door and you ask them about the possibility of working with the Palestinians in a two-state deal and this, that, and the other, I can completely understand how they're very emotional right now. They're very angry. And they're, they don't want to talk about that, right? Like, you know, Americans didn't want to talk about peace with the Taliban on, you know, October 1st, 2001, mm -hmm. right? But that's the those people. The leaders in the room, though, are the people that have to set that aside, right? Yeah. They're, to me, you know, I mean, you think John Kennedy wasn't upset when a U-2 got shot down over, you know what I mean? Like, but can't bomb the whole world because he's angry. He's the leader in the room, Okay. He's the one who's got to say, I have to think rationally here. I have to play out the next move and the move that comes after that and the move that comes after that. I'm not a delivery car driver living in Israel who's angry because my cousin got kidnapped. You know, they don't want to talk peace. And well, I what's, get that what's because, like here, I said, what, you guys wouldn't have wanted to either. What's funny but here, Josh. They've got to do it. Yeah, what's funny here, Josh, is that the Iranians the other day said, Okay, we shot all these missiles and all these drones. We're through. That's it. We retaliated for what Israel did to us. Okay? It's all over. We're through. Well, apparently Netanyahu didn't want it to be through. So now they're lobbing stuff back at Israel. Now, of course, they know that most of that stuff is never going to make it to Israel because they got that damn Iron Dome. Well, a damn good Iron Dome. Good, you know? Yeah. Uh, none of those missile, missiles are going to get through. So what are those missiles from Iran? They're really a statement more than anything else. They know they're not going to get through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. I don't necessarily disagree with all of what Israel's doing, and I, I kind of understand some of their operational thinking and everything, but I, I will agree that, you know, Netanyahu is just not... He's not the the guy for them, you know. He's I mean, not the or, guy who's going to go to the peace table. No, That's for goddamn sure. <laughs> and, and if I had to pay like a little small fee or something to get him out, so that people could cop calling him, you know, stop calling him BB on all the news programs, I, yeah. just tell me who to send the money to. And I'm not wealthy, but you know, I'll put a hundred bucks or something out if I never have to hear someone come on and call him BB ever again. That wouldn't hurt my feelings. <laughs> That'd be enough. <laughs> So, I mean, maybe they could find someone, you know, who doesn't have a nickname this time. So, you know, I would start there. Maybe. Like Bobo. Right. Yeah. You know, someone with a, a name we could all pronounce so that we don't have to call him something else. I don't know. Whatever. But yeah, I get a little tired of that, too. But, I mean, they all act like he's their, I don't know, best friend or like they grew up with him or whatever. I mean, I kind of think personally he's... I don't think he strategically thinks that well, you know, uh, you know, I, I look at it like that, you know, more than anything. And I don't think he's really an honest uh, politician. Well, part of part of part, part of the reason problems, part of the reason for this whole way of handling this situation was because they were about ready to throw him out of office. They were about ready to actually put him on trial. Yeah. Well, right. For malfeasance in office. And this stopped them from doing that. Yeah. You know, or at least it slowed down the process. 
Yeah, I think he's still, he's been indicted, is what I believe. It's just they haven't done anything about the indictment yet. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember, but that might be right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, he's just not a good leader for to me. I mean, you know, I I don't I've never seen the attraction to to him amongst Israelis or anybody else. I mean, again, I look at it almost like a do Trump. There's got to be somebody well, else within Israel. I I again have said before they can you support know, the, the 1,200 people that were either killed or kidnapped by Hamas was terrible. It was absolutely unconscionable. However, turning around and killing 33,000 Gazans and only getting maybe about 12 or 15 members of Hamas is a little disproportionate. You know? I mean, that's uncalled for. <laughs> and those people are starving now, they're dying from malnutrition. They're dying from not being able to have a hospital to take care of their wounds. I mean, it's terrible what's been going on over there. And you, what he did was he had a great collateral in what the rest of the world thought of Jews once they were attacked like that. And he completely spent all that collateral. You know, and now nobody yeah. in the world really thinks very much of, of Israel and Netanyahu and the and the so-called measured response, you know? So it's, it's terrible. It's just terrible. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't... Don't do it. Don't do it in my name. That's all I'm saying, you know? Yes, uh, yes, Alan. I think Netanyahu wants to take bulldozers and push all of Gaza into the ocean. Well, he's not going to be able to do that, but he can annex it and he can run it and he can take it over. They've destroyed so much... In the in, you see it in the media, all these buildings. I mean, it's just it's a parking lot. You know, it's right. terrible. It's and terrible. It is terrible. You know, and, and and but what's even more terrible is what it's done for Jewish people around the world, and the right. fact that people, you know, people will look at me and go, "See, I told you, Jews suck." You know. Uh, and and who am I to argue after they point out Netanyahu and what's going on with him? Yeah, I, mean, I just I think it would be helpful to their case if they would find someone else who was more interested in a good dialogue about what comes next. Well, in all due respect to the Israelis, mm -hmm. uh, many of them are protesting against Netanyahu. It, yeah, and I, have been before the war. Hmm? Right. What? They were before the war, too. Yeah, but more so now. You know, oh, yeah. they right. want, what they want are the hostages back, if there are any left. Oh, right. Agreed. And that's what I was saying, was I can understand how a regular person there is not necessarily jumping up and down wanting to, you know, get us a peace plan going on. They're angry. But that's the, the job of the leaders is <laughs> to lead with anger. It's to do what's best for the people. Yes. Right? I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, and uh, so, I mean, it's, it's just, it's terrible. It's just terrible. And uh, I don't like being associated with it, you know. And uh, I, uh, because I don't believe in it, and I do believe that the Palestinians and the people in Gaza need their own homelands. And uh, I just, you know, I feel sorry for the the carnage that has been leveled upon them in the name of Judaism because of that goddamn Israeli flag that's got my Star of David on it. You know? I don't know. Call me just a self-loathing Jew. Okay, I'll go along with that. Anyway, hey, listen, everybody, this has been nice tonight. God, I should take Wednesdays off more often. I'm better on a Thursday, <laughs> right? You know? Keeps you sharp. It keeps me sharp, yeah. I knew you were going to say that. But <laughs> we will have a show next Wednesday. Don't worry about it. Thank you so much uh, um, uh, to our good friend, uh, Josh. Uh, we really we really appreciate your participation here. Brian, same thing with yours as with Alan. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, You're Jeff. Welcome. Good to have you here. Okay. Uh, Kevin, 
Your delight, as always, and Tony, well, what can we say about him? He's Tony. <laughs> That's all we can say about him. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Huh? Anyway, everybody, give a Good big night. wave goodbye, and we'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. I better sign off before they all hang up on me, okay? There they go. Hey, listen. Next, over this same station, is, uh, is, is Amy Manuel. She's got a show called The Intersection. And she'll be here with you uh, just momentarily. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I will see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Night, everybody. Night, everybody.